Hello everyone and welcome to the video about advanced techniques that I use when creating liveries for ACC in Blender. If you'd like to go through the basics, please follow the link in the description to my original video where I describe the setup in Blender and basics of livery creation. Although it has already been covered in the original video, we will again go through the initial texture slot setup in Blender 4 since the new version of Blender has moved the elements around a bit and we are just going to showcase this again, just in case if you are maybe feeling lost in the newer version of Blender. And apart from that, we will be covering the following topics. Uh, working with multiple texture slots. Uh, so far we used only three base decals and uh, sponsors, but we're going to showcase uh, how you can use more in case you would need this. Uh, next topic would be p panel and detail selection. Uh, to showcase how you can select uh, separate panels or parts of panels, so to speak. Uh, next one will be uh, the uh, bleed over panels, uh, logo mirroring, uh, drawing of custom shapes, wrapping the decals around bends, and loading liveries into Blender in case you already have a livery that you want to load back in to make some changes or something, for example. Uh, each of these sections will also be timestamped, so you can simply click through them on YouTube if you're interested in a particular topic. Alright, and with that said, let's uh, go into the video. Right, uh, let's get started. Uh, we will select everything and just hit delete to delete everything that we have. Uh, go file, import, and the difference from before is we use Wavefront Legacy. This is no longer available in uh, Blender 4. So we're just going to use the regular Wavefront.obj. Click on import and locate your, uh, your uh, 3D objects wherever you have them. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, let's say, the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Evo 2. Let's load it up. It should already be loaded, so let's use our mouse scroll to, to zoom out a little bit. Click on it, right, and select Shade Smooth. Uh, let's go into Texture Paint, and this is, again, zoom, oops, zoom out a little bit. This is where the difference uh, with Blender 3 is. As you can see on the right, we have no texture slots with, where we can define those base decals and sponsors. This has been moved to the top here. Uh, you open this drop down and click on the plus. Select the base color. And we're going to name it base. Give it 4096 pixels. And let's give it a base color of something. Let's say blue. Okay. And the car turns blue. Now we're going to add the decals in the same way, except for color. We're going to go again down here to alpha and set this to zero. Car will disappear. There's no problem with that. Let's add another uh, texture slot. We'll call it spawn search. And again, the same alpha to zero. And okay, we should have three of them. If we click the base, the car reappears. If we click decals, it disappears again. Ooh, I painted on it. Let's control Z. And let's expand this left pane a little bit. Move the mouse to the bottom right, where you see the cursor changes its shape. Click and drag up to get two splits here. Uh, then click here on uh, this editor type and select Shader Editor. We will need to rearrange those a little bit. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see, like so. So we have the base, we have the decals, and we have the sponsors. Uh, the base is base color output is currently connected to the base color input on this principal BSDF. It's fine. Uh, we need to connect all of these together, so we're going to add color, mix color, and if we drop it here onto the line, the base color output should be connected to the A input of the mix element, and the result will be connected to the base color uh, of the uh, principal BSDF. 
uh, we're going to take decals, take the output of color onto B, and connect this factor onto the alpha of decals. Right click on this one, duplicate it, and drop it again on this line here. It, it again automatically connects as it should. Uh, we're going to need to move this a little bit. And again, color to B, factor to alpha. There we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller again and make the uh, main window a little bit uh, bigger. Again, we don't see anything. Uh, what we need to do is here, select the viewport shading uh, to, or set it to material. Or if we just press Z, we should get this uh, command wheel type thing. Can either hit to or click on material preview. And there we go. The car is here and visible. Uh, one other thing is to select the paint mask and after that we are ready to go. There we go. As you can see, the car changed color slightly, uh, but that's that's uh, normal. So yeah, that's the basic setup that you need to go through. And now we are going to go to uh, the next section, which is uh, working with multiple texture slots. Okay, uh, next topic is working with multiple texture slots. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, a different car loaded now up. Uh, this is because it's much easier for me to explain this on an actual scenario where I actually had to use this. Uh, by the way, if you do like this, uh, this livery, uh, I will link uh, the download to it. Uh, I will publish it. I, this is kind of like my give back to uh, to the uh, community. So if you want to download it, it's free to download, free to use anywhere you want. I have been uh, racing with it from time to time, uh, but yeah, I want to give something back to the community and this is kind of my, my way of doing so. Uh, so texture slots and mul working with multiple texture slots, what this actually is uh, in the examples before we just use the base, decals and sponsors. Uh, of course, this can be named whatever. We're just using the name decals and sponsors because this coincides with the names uh, that the uh, AC or ACC kind of loads into. Those are kind of the layers. You can think of them as paint layers uh, where you can paint different stuff on them. Uh, so let, let, me, let me just maybe showcase how, uh, how I did it here. As you can see on this uh, on this uh, livery, we kind of have four uh, four uh, elements. Uh, one is the base paint. Next is the piggies, and the final is the grass. Uh, sorry, the third one. The final is actually the uh, uh, logos uh, that I used. And why why did I, did I do that? Uh, so I created the base the base paint, which is not a directly solid color. As you can see, it changes from top to bottom. And then I started painting piggies onto that livery. And what happens now, let's say for example, I don't like the positioning of this king pig here. Uh, let's go to piggies. And if I go erase alpha, and if I start removing, you see, I'm removing only the piggy. I'm not removing the grass, I'm not removing the base paint. I'm removing only the piggy. And that's why I use it. So I'm going to control Z again. Let's say I don't like how this grass looks here. I can select uh, my different texture slot, uh, which is grass. And can remove it. And as you can see, I'm not removing the piggies. I'm only removing the grass. The piggies stay as they are. Now I can go and draw the new grass over them and the biggest will stay in their, in their position. So that's kind of why you would maybe want to use uh, multiple texture slots in case you are drawing things on top of things so that you can then uh, remove them separately should you make a mistake where you are a couple of steps in and you cannot control Z uh, out back again. Right, and we're back to our Lambo. We're going, we're going to be showcasing how to set up this. It's actually very simple actually, uh, how to set up. So uh, what we're going to do is, again, go on the top drop down here, click plus, another base color. You can call it, I don't know, 
shape, doesn't matter. Again, give it the same size, 4096 by 4096, and alpha. Okay. Oops, I didn't want to start painting on anything. Uh, there we go. Now we again go to our, uh, what's it called again? Sorry, I forgot the name, uh, shader editor. As you can see, it's been added here. So how we're going to add this is basically move these a little bit back and place it in between here. Again, duplicate the mix, drop it onto this line. Again, correct color with B, factor with alpha. Now, how these are structured is the base, which we never actually use, we use it only as a solid color so that we see a car in Blender, is the bottom one. The next one on top is decals. The next one on top of that is shape. And the next one on top of that is sponsors. So now we have three layers, three texture slots where we can draw our things. So we're going to go back to our car. Uh, select decals. There we go. Select some color. Red, for example. And we're going to draw some obscure shape here. Right? Let's say we want to fill in the red with uh, another color. We're going to call or use light blue. So now we can simply do this. And let's say we made a mistake and we went outside. Of course, we can control Z in this case because it's just a single line. Well, let's say this is a more complex shape that we're drawing and control Z is out of the question. What we can do is erase alpha and start erasing. And look at that. Only the blue stuff is being erased. See? Red one stays in, in place. And blue one gets erased. So that's why you use multiple texture slots. And that is how you create them. There is an additional step that you now need to take when you're exporting uh, your livery. Previously, what we did, we would just go into this top left view. Let's again, say, select decals. As you can see, it now only has the red shapes. You could just click image and save as. Save it as decals and you would have everything in it, right? You could just load this into ACC and it'd be done, right? But we cannot do this now because we need to also export the shape uh, texture slot, which only has the blue stuff. So we go image, save as, shape. Now, what we need to do is go into our documents. and open up decals. We're going to open them in GIMP. And voila, we have this awesome livery here. Open this layer and find the second thing, which is our shape, and there we go. We have our drawn shape together. What we then still need to do is just export this uh, 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 as an image, decals PNG, export it, and you can then use this exported image in uh, your ACC livery. Uh, that's how you again then compress all of those uh, layers back into a single image. Of course, it's a little bit more steps to do, but uh, if you are making a little bit more complex uh, or a lengthy livery where you might need to change stuff afterwards, or for any other reason, you might want to do, use this. Uh, I've used this quite quite some times and it has helped me a lot, especially when I need to revert things or when I, when I need to change things later. Maybe you use it, maybe you won't, but it's definitely a neat trick to learn. 
And yeah, that covers the multiple texture slots session. Ah, sorry, topic. Let's uh, move on to the next. Alright, uh, next topic is the selection of panels and detailed selections of parts of panels. Uh, so when you see an image of a car like uh, you have here where everything is kind of like whitened out, this uh, means that nothing is selected. also means I cannot draw anywhere on it. And if I hit A, everything becomes selected, so now I can draw on basically everything. Uh, we're going to control Z out of here. And then to deselect everything, you hit A twice quickly. And you can also see on this section here, uh, the uh, wireframes disappear based on the selection. So if I hit A, everything is selected, everything reappears. And if I hit double A, I mean, if I hit A twice, everything uh, disappears again. Uh, now to select uh, specific panels, let's say you want to select the roof, you hover the mouse over the roof and hit L. Uh, and now you can see the mesh for the roof and everything that's uh, connected to it is uh, is selected. So now I can, as you can see, I can paint over the roof. And only the selected parts will be painted. If we look at uh, here, onto the roof, we can see uh, that it's contained within that wireframe. And also if I hit A again, you can see that only the roof has been painted. Kind of pinkish white, I think this is. Uh, it's not entirely a white color, but uh, no matter. Uh, and now we're going to unpaint everything that we've painted. Painted, sorry. Words are hard, apparently. And now we're going to go into, uh, yeah, selection of, uh, the custom selection bits, basically. So. If I just deselect everything and hit L, as you can see, the whole roof and the A pillars are selected because it's uh, on this mesh. But let's say we don't want that. Let's say we want to paint only the roof and not the A pillars. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, take, oh, this is a new thing here. Weak, maybe, no. Uh, actually click and hold on tweak until this uh, second box appears and then uh, either select okay, I'm, we're going to use lasso select for example so let me know first showcase because I am going to select this whole panel later anyway but with the lasso select you can draw kind of the custom shape how you want to select and uh, yeah I, I forgot to hold down uh, let's go back Select everything, so hold shift, left shift, and then if I draw kind of a shape in the middle here that I want to select and release it, as you can see, it will uh, select uh, part of this roof panel here. Here, And if I hit control and hold control and, select and uh, draw another kind of circle and release it, parts of uh, this will be deselected, as you can see, it's being selected based on those triangles, so because here it's a rather big one, uh, you get a lot of them uh, selected. So, or if you can just click, as you can see, like I'm doing here, not actually drawing anything, but I'm just selecting parts of this uh, roof panel here. Um, we're going to hit L on this whole one, so and go back to the original plan which was to deselect the A pillar because we don't want to color that. So I'm holding down control and I'm just going to draw a shape of it around it here. Just first, or a uh, kind of a rough shape. Doesn't need to be a complete deselection yet. We're going to get to that uh, a little bit later. And same on this side. All right, it's looking kind of kind of okay. Um, except here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Again, hit control, so we're deselecting. There we go. Now, we kind of want to make this nice line to select here. So again, hold control. Okay, 
maybe a little bit too much. Now we're going to go into finer selection and deselection. Position our view a little bit. I saw something blue here still. Ah, oh, there we go. Control. Oh, I held shift, not control. So shift adds, control removes. And that's what we kind of want to do here. This is still something here selected. I can see this tiny line here. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we need to deselect this. So hold control. Actually, uh, sorry, hold shift. When you're just clicking, it's just hold shift. Shift uh, does then the both in both ways. You either add or remove. If, if you click on an unselected part, it will add it. If you clicked on a selected part, it will remove it. So anywhere, as you can see, this happens. But if I draw a shape, then shift adds, control removes. And let's deselect these here. Kinda, oops, too much, see. Kinda want to add this one back here. Want this painted. Okay, but I don't want this part painted. painted. Here, it might be a little bit hard. So we might need to keep those here. Of course, you're limited to the wireframe uh, of the car. So it has to be kind of like this, but well, well enough for for the, uh, for the purposes of this presentation. And let's just do a quick one here as well. Control, deselect this. Okay. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. I want to be doing those fine changes from very far away because it's so easy to miss your click. As you can see, those triangles here are very, very small. And I think this is very much similar. Actually, I need to take a little bit off here. I also need to take this off. There we go. Away with you. This might be... Nope. Ah. Let's see if we add this. Oh, too much, too much, too much. Yeah, I think this will be good enough for the presentation. So now we have custom selection done. We go back uh, uh, to the brush and draw. And we can now paint over our roof. To speed things up, you can go here to the symmetry. It's a little bit hidden. If you make this smaller, you should see it. Or actually leave this and manipulate this left one so you see more controls. What this now is doing, as you can see, I'm drawing on the right side and it's filling in the left side as well. It speeds up the process a little bit. There we go. And now our roof is white. It, it's not perfect, but uh, yeah, we, we could play around a little bit to make this edge here a little bit softer, not be so jaggedy, but it's good enough for now. And yeah, that's uh, the uh, detailed selection technique that I'm using when I'm uh, doing liveries. You might need to do this when, uh, yeah, when when you're drawing over panels uh, that are, how should I say this, joined together in the mesh. So here, uh, right, the roof is joined together with the A pillars here as well. If you don't want to paint these over, you have to kind of either be careful how you paint, leave them selected, and just be careful with how you're painting, or uh, you have to go and. Um, yeah, uh, deselect certain parts so that you can just draw over. Okay, that's uh, that's it for panel and detailed selection. And on to the next topic. The next topic is bleed. We're not going to be cutting anyone, 
But uh, what bleed means, means is when you're drawing over the panels or over the car here, let me deselect everything and uh, select the roof again. Uh, as you can see, certain pixels are going over the edges and that's called bleed. Now in some cases, like you can see here with the this kind of door panel or whatever, the bleed doesn't go significantly over. So what you can do is go to options and increase this bleed. I usually leave this at around five pixels. It's still not perfect. It will still miss some pixels like you can see here, but a lot, a lot less. Um, five is kind of okay. Anything more and what can happen is if you select everything, as you can see some of these wireframes are very close together. So if you go over five, it might happen that you're painting this part, wherever this is on the on this car, and the bleed will go already over this part here, which is maybe not what you want. Uh, so yeah, do, do play around with this, but uh, I feel like five is kind of a good compromise. If you can run more two, uh, this means that, uh, yeah, not that much of the car or other parts will be painted, except the ones that you want. And this, it doesn't even matter if they're selected or not, because if you deselect everything, as you can see, those are here, right? And if I deselect everything, I, I can still paint over this, even though it's not selected. In this view, you can paint over everything. Oh, the, it's a mirror, right? Uh, so you probably want them both to be the same colors or not. Uh, but yeah, uh, be, be careful with that bleed might bleed over onto other parts and uh, yep, you do not, <laughs> you possibly do not want it. Uh, short, uh, a short topic, but uh, certainly uh, an important one, I feel. All right, on to the next. Okay, uh, next topic is uh, drawing symmetrical log logos on both sides. Uh, we're going to deselect everything and just select the right door and the left door. Uh, to paint logos, we have to load the texture. So we go here onto the textures, new, and open, and open this ACC logo. Uh, should be good, I think. Let's go back to tool, and here under texture, we select stencil. It's a little bit, uh, skewed so we need to uh, where is this this again is a new ah here reset image image uh, and uh, reset reset transform and image aspect we reset it to the uh, original value so uh, make sure this x symmetry is uh, enabled click on x here so you get the perfect positioning on the x axis and we're just going to place uh, the logo over. And we're also going to make sure we are at the completely white. We want the complete white uh, coloring over uh, and select sponsors. So uh, we want the exactly white color because if we, for example, go to red, paint over you can see it's red it's not, it's not white uh, so again go back here uh, hue doesn't matter saturation white uh, zero and this gives us white now we have the X symmetry here so we just paint it over there we go and if we hit X again, this will uh, rotate the car 180 degrees and we'll see the other, other end. And oopsie, it's backward. Uh, but no matter why we do the X uh, symmetry drawing first is so that we see where the logo should be. Then we position the stencil over the correctly oriented stencil. Now we, um, we unlink it by clicking this X, so we don't have the stencil anymore. Here, go to Erase Alpha and disable 
uh, mesh symmetry on the x-axis or any axis that you're using because now we're going to be removing this and not removing the logo on the other end. There we go. And when we load back the texture as stencil again, it stays in the same position. So make sure you're not changing the view of the car during this process in any way. Uh, otherwise the stencil will not be in the same position anymore. But because we didn't, the stencil is still in the correct position. And can draw things over. There we go. I'll zoom out. And as you can see, I now have the Assetto Corsa Competizione logo on the doors on both sides, both in the same, uh, uh, in the correct orientation. Select everything and remove the stencil for now because we won't need it anymore. There we go. That was uh, logo mirroring in Blender. And on to the next topic. All right, and for the next topic of drawing custom shapes is what I use normally is I use a third party imaging software. I use GIMP, um, can be done with Photoshop and any other, uh, uh, any other imaging software that you're familiar with, I would say. So what I do is first I take a screenshot of the car. You probably didn't see that uh, snipping tool that I used to uh, just screenshot the car itself, but you can take a screenshot of the whole screen or what, however you like. Basically, we go into GIMP, we're going to start a new image. Um, background shouldn't matter. And I'm going to paste, paste my screenshot in here. There we go. Now I'm going to create a new layer. Give it a, give it a name, shape. And whew, yeah, what do I want to draw? Honestly, I don't know. So we're going to say, I want to draw from here, here. I know it's not an artistic shape, but let's pretend this is something I, I want. And color, let's choose yellow something. And then we need bucket fill. Okay. And we are on the new layer. Okay. Oopsie. Yep has a nice soft edge. Okay. Now we don't need the background anymore. And we're going to crop just around the shape. There we go. And now export this into <coughs> our livery. And let's call it shape one. Export it. And in back in Blender, we can go to textures. Create a new texture, open, shape one. As you can see it's in here, magic. All right, and again, reset transform and image aspect. And now I just, I am still in X, X view and I have uh, X symmetry enabled. So I might not, uh, yeah, let's, let's not select everything. Let's just select panels that we want to paint over. Uh, it's not going to come that high. So I don't want to uh, paint over those louvers here. And I do want to paint the hood. And we're going to do the same on the other end. So if it's not selected on the other side, the X symmetry won't paint over it. Okay, should be it, I think. Oh, let me also select this tiny fellow here. There we go. Okay. I wanted it to be something like here, for example. There we go, positioned. You're probably going to want to spend a bit more time when you're doing this for real. I'm just rushing through 
the uh, presentation. And there we go. Yellow line is colored in. As you can see, it does need some correction. But this is then uh, a topic for uh, for our next, uh, I mean, a discussion for our next topic. Um, actually, we're not going to paint in the, uh, the hood, because I think it looks looks kind of nice this way, where, where it ends on this. But we do need to paint in other, other sides uh, where things are not selected. So yeah, that's uh, uh, the topic on drawing custom shapes. Take a screenshot. Import it in your uh, in your imaging software. Draw the shape over the car there. Create an image of it, and come back to Blender, paint it on. And there you go. All right, and that's it for this topic. And we are moving on to the next one. All right, and then the next topic is wrapping the decals around the bends. Uh, I said originally uh, we're not going to do the uh, hood, but we will need to do it. Uh, mainly because a little bit of it has already shown over. And uh, the other reason being is because, uh, yeah, we don't really have much other areas where we can showcase this. So, uh, what we are actually talking about here is, uh, as you can see here, the decal wasn't painted in behind this part here that's because uh, yeah when you are in this view all right oops sorry Come on. as you can see that part behind is kind of hidden so what i do is then just position my camera so that i can see the part that i want to paint and then it's just manipulation of the decal, just right click shift to enlarge, right click control to kind of rotate, and you might already see what I'm trying to do here. Uh, first thing is we're just going to select this part and this part on this end here, because we don't want to paint anything else. As, no, as I said, this is just bit of playing around with positioning. I'm not going to do it perfect because uh, I have to make this video in the end. So let's say something like this. Paint it over. And yeah, it, it, it's not perfect. I should have played uh, around with it a little bit more. And yeah, I would have kind of nailed this edge. Uh, and one more time, onto, oopsie, the, uh, not the roof, the hood. So here we can see the line is kind of moving through here and here. So what we need to do is kind of use this part because it is a little bit bigger. Uh, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, or we can do it in two steps here. Like this. This will be the first part. And then kind of uh, this will be a little bit hard. But we're just going to come up with something, so it's a little bit jaggedy here now. And we still need to go, go this way. Not perfect. Definitely not perfect. Oops, uh, did I paint too much? Yes, I did. Control Z. I don't want to paint that part towards the edge, but just this middle part. Uh, oops, wrong button. If we don't select everything. It kind of looks okay-ish. Kind of looks okay-ish. And here is, as well you can see, it's a little bit of a discoloration. Let's paint that in. There we go. 
course, this is a lot simpler because I'm using a solid, solid color, color decal. Uh, it uh, gets a little bit harder when uh, you have an actual decal with some texture in it, uh, some imagery, some, I don't know, uh, uh, text or something. It gets harder. But that's pretty much the only way that uh, I know how to do it. That, that's pretty much the only way how I do do it is by uh, just, uh, yeah, kind of uh, use, uh, use this kind of method to uh, rotate the car a little bit, rotate the, the decal, just uh, trial and error, basically. It's a long process, but in the end, I, I think it's worth it. Okay, uh, that's, uh, yeah, almost the last topic. We have another one, and uh, then we're going to wrap up. Okay, and time for the final topic, uh, which is loading your existing livery or altering this livery outside of Blender and then loading it back in. You might be wondering why you might want to even do this. So, yeah, if you have an old livery, you might want to start editing it in, in Blender because it's more convenient. You just load it in. Or, in uh, my case here, um, well, I've kind of made a mistake during our uh, adventures and I've painted, painted the yellow lines over the sponsor's uh, texture slot and I don't want that, I want them on decals. Uh, now, I could I could do this in, in Blender itself because it's a, a rather simple design, but for the sake of uh, this guide we are going to do it uh, as if it wasn't possible and we're going to separate the, these uh, sponsors and uh, decals out from uh, from one another uh, by using GIMP. So first we're going to go and export the sponsors and we're going to name it sponsors export save image then we're going to go on to decals because we need to export the white roof and we're going to say save as decals x oops export save image okay now uh, we can go to GIMP and we're going to open, uh, where is this, there we go, sponsors export, you can see it's located here, and we're going to open decals export. Right, uh, one other change that I'm going to do in decals is remove this white dot that we have over uh, the mirror. I don't want it anymore. And uh, then we're going to go and rip out the yellow parts. Uh, wrong tool. Select by color. There we go. We can even go and increase or grow the selection. I think by two pixels should be safe. We shouldn't be. Yep. Cut. And paste. Uh, yeah, let's paste, and there we go. Uh, additionally, I'm going to do one other thing, which is change the color. Uh, let's say I want it red. I uh, just need to find the correct kind of red. Uh, too pinkish. Let's say this works. Okay. All right. Now in GIMP, I'm going to go and export this as decals. And export this image as sponsors. Okay, now what we're going to do is go back into Blender. We're going to increase the size of this right hand side here. Zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. In uh, the sponsor's texture slot, 
we have this uh, open image icon. Click on it. And if I select sponsors, see, it has loaded my sponsors without the yellow stripes. And now we do the same for decals. And there we go, we have red stripes in it. Make this smaller again. And as you can see, uh, yeah, the, the texture slots have been renamed slightly, but uh, that's okay. Uh, there are still some mistakes in delivery that uh, we need to uh, kind of take care of like you can see here on this side. I, I wasn't paying attention before uh, Yeah, but yeah, it, it's pretty much the same. Maybe the uh, recoloration uh, Hasn't worked exactly as I wanted to because I just ba basically just rushed through this because I'm pretty sure This uh, part was missing. It was not missing here before uh, Or maybe it was I don't know. Uh, I would need to uh, I would need to check uh, But it's basically how you uh, re-import those images back in. Maybe I moved it slightly when I pasted uh, back over here. Need to be careful with such things. Something that I wasn't, uh, that I certainly wasn't uh, right now because I just, uh, yeah, rushed through. But it does certainly look everything is in the same position, more or less. But yeah, uh, that's that's basically how you do it. How you uh, re-import your livery back uh, into Blender, where you can continue editing it uh, if you if you so wish to. All right, that was uh, end of uh, the final section or final topic. All right, thank you all for watching. And as mentioned before, the Bad Pig livery that you can see on the screen now is available for download in the video description. This is initially a livery that I made for myself. Uh, that I've used in a couple of races, uh, but I'm sort of giving it back, back to the community. Free to use, uh, just follow the link in the description, install it into your ACC, and blast away with the bad piggies all over your the big pig, 911 GT3. Uh, yeah, if you like the video, please do leave it a like. Uh, if you need any assistance with your liveries or making them or whatever, please feel free to reach out to me either via the comments in YouTube or uh, in the other ways that you can contact me. Uh, all the methods are available in the description as well. Also, please remember to subscribe to the channel so you're not missing out on any future content. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.